Hello dear students, welcome to my channel. I do hope all are keeping fine. And let us look into EAIP today. You will come to know what is EAIP very soon. Okay. So today our special topic is principles of object oriented programming system. And out here, the first one is encapsulation. It is the principle by which an object encapsulates or binds codes and data in a clear cut wrapper or block. The working codes and data are enclosed within a pair of curly brackets. Okay, now let's see the example. Here you can see a small function where you can see function name is main and the body or the block of the function is having one line that system out print ln. This is a demo block encapsulated. Out here you can see only one line is given. There can be more than one line and all these lines or single line which is given here inside the body is encapsulated by a pair of curly bracket. That means this statement is within a pair of curly of within a pair of curly bracket. So whenever this function is called for execution or for inheritance for any other purpose, it will be represented only by the function name. And all the codes what is given here are going to be hidden, going to be invisible, going to be secret, confidential for the user or the caller who is calling the function. They can only see the answer. Only they can give the input and see the answer. That's all. How the codes are working, how the object is working, they are not concerned with that and they will not be able to see the details. Okay. Now, next one. The advantages of encapsulation. What are the advantages? Now, let's see. The first one is modularity. It helps to divide a complex work into simple, smaller groups or blocks. It helps to divide a long program in a smaller group of codes to simplify the work of coding and debugging. So once a work is divided into smaller blocks, it becomes obviously easy for writing the program and debugging the program. It can be easy for debugging as, as well as for coding because when a long program is there, very big program, it becomes difficult to trace the problem. Sometimes by chance the output is not coming properly where our formula has gone wrong, where things have gone wrong. So because computer can only detect syntax error, it cannot detect logical errors that we create while writing. So because of the logical error, there might be some problems in the program. So here the modularity helps us to reduce the chance of having the mistakes by dividing a long program into smaller groups of blocks through different functions. Okay, now next one. Information hiding. The next advantage is information hiding. So obviously when the the codes are codes and data is put together, they are put inside a pair of curly bracket, they are encapsulated. Obviously they become hidden from the external user. It hides the working code from easy access and misuse by any function caller. Any function caller cannot call it until unless the programmer has given permission by making it as a public type or private type visible to the package, public type visible to all. No? So this restriction is there to protect more add-on to the encapsulation. Next one, the visible modifiers, as I was talking about private and public, now these are called visible modifiers or access specifier. They restrict the accessibility and visibility of codes and functions to the caller. The caller might call it, but if it is restricted, they cannot easily and freely call the functions and use the functions whenever, wherever they like. So these are used 
and among them the most popular are public, private, protected and package. These four are commonly used and among these four the most commonly used visible modifiers are public and private. And out of these two, public is a default visible modifier. Even if you don't write public void main, it is accepted as public. If you don't declare as public int xyz whatever, it is automatically considered as public type. Public means open to all. Okay, now let's see the next one. Now the next principle is called abstraction. Abstraction is achieved through the principle of encapsulation. That means encapsulation and abstraction are related, related to each other. Encapsulation will help the object to be hidden so that it can be represented in totality by the next principle that is called as abstraction. Both are interrelated. Encapsulation and abstraction both are interrelated. Encapsulation helps to create object in abstract form. Because each blocks or function are given name that exists inside a class. Encapsulation helps to create objects in abstract form. Because each blocks functions are given name that exists inside a class. All the functions or blocks are represented by class name all together. So whatever number of functions are there whenever you call them they are represented by the class name all the functions inside one class so all the functions are represented by one single class name okay so other details are hidden other details are not visible not accessible because they are encapsulated and therefore we represent them in totality that is called abstraction of the object by the name Advantage abstraction. It is the principle by which an object is represented in totality without getting into the internal details. We don't want to see, we do, we cannot see rather, we do not see, is we cannot see the internal details, how the function is working, how the program is working, how the functions are doing the work of taking input and giving the output, what formula they are using to calculate. All these things will be hidden. All the objects within a class are represented by the class name without disclosing the internal details in is called abstraction. So all the objects within the class are represented only by the class name without disclosing their internal details and techniques, the mechanism, how they are working. Okay, next. Next is inheritance. Now it is the principle by which principle by which the programmer can create a new object inheriting the property of an existing object. So there has to be an object already created and the feature, the property of that object can be inherited to a new object easily. But provided the object that you are trying to inherit should be within your accessible limit, within the accessible limit. Okay. Now, advantages of inheritance. Now, this feature saves a lot of coding time, especially when coding for big project. Whenever we are writing a long program, no, so many blocks, so many functions that we are using. If more than one functions or several functions has to be used for a long program, in that case, this becomes very easy for programmer to inherit a class or a function that is already created and use the code again. So without writing the same codes again and again, they can be simply called, they can be simply inherit and create a new object. So the codes can be reused easily without any difficulty just by writing a line of inheritance statement in the program. Just line one, one line of code we can write to inherit the property of object that we want to use it in our program and then the whole property of the function or the method or the class will be transferred to one single variable without any difficulty. And then we can use it 
as to represent the object that we are inheriting. Okay. Now here we are going to discuss about the two new terms that is coming with the inheritance. They are superclass and subclass. The main class from where the objects are inherited is called superclass. The class that is already existing, the function that is already existing and that we are inheriting from there. So that class, the main class which is existing, the function that is existing, the object that is existing which you are going to inherit, they are called as superclass or they are called as parent class. Okay. The new class, the new object that we are going to create, that you inherit and create a new object, that new object is going to be called as subclass or child class. Subclass or child class. So the main class is called superclass. The inherited class is called subclass. The main class is called parent class. And the inherited class is called as a child class. Okay. Now these two terms are very important. Remember, keep in mind. Okay, now next principle is called polymorphism. Now this principle makes an object to respond differently depending on different inputs or messages given to it. So depending on the input that you are given, depending on the parameter that you are given, the same function name, even though the function name is same, they will respond in two different ways or the multiple different ways. Okay. Look at the example. There are two functions created. Very small function. Public int area. That means this function is going to return integer answer. The parameter is having int l and int b. Taking length and breadth. Both integer type. Return type is integer. Because when you multiply two integer numbers. You get integer answer obviously. So length and breadth is producing answer. Length into breadth is giving answer as area. Okay. Now let's see the other side. The next function is showing public float area b int b int h. Here what you find here is the return type is float. The function name is same. Parameters also. There are two parameters. Both are of integer type. One is b and one is h. Now why float? Why the return type is float? Because of the formula that we are going to use. Even though the inputs are same, the integer, 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 integer. Here, because of the function, because of the formula, the return type is different. Okay. So, we see the similarity. The similarity is in the parameters and similarity is there in the name of the function. Okay. Now, this, this both the functions are going to produce two different answers because the inputs are different. No, name is same, inputs are different. One is taking length and breadth, other one is taking base and height. Length and breadth means to multiply get the area and base and height also is there but with a different formula which is using a fractional number to produce the area of a triangle and hence the functions are giving different output. Now, in the same manner, and this two techniques, these two functions that are given in example is called function overloading. This technique is called as function overloading. The advantage of polymorphism, this principle allows us to create multiple functions or objects with the same name, but different sets of parameter variables. As you have already seen, parameters are different, return type is different, but the function name is same. It enables us to use function overloading technique in our program. So it will enable us through polymorphism or sorry through function overloading the polymorphism can be achieved or we can use function overloading in order to achieve the polymorphism of the object oriented. Now all these principles are related to each other. 
they are related to each other and they are also related to each objects that we create in our program okay now this much for today thank you for watching this video follow my next video for more on java at schools we'll be discussing more important topics very important topics something related to programs so till then like share subscribe comment and hit the bell icon for new upcoming videos so take care and bye bye